So I'm going to start a little different. I want to talk about a pet peeve of mine. A pet peeve, and this is a real pain for me. And um, so this is a true story. This was only last week. This was last week, Thursday. I went to the Toronto City to uh, pay some parking tickets. Okay? Don't ask me how I got them. Don't ask me why I have parking tickets. I just went to pay. There's only two parking tickets that I went to pay. But um, uh, when I went there, there was actually three different forms that I had to fill out. And like, that seems like, okay, two parking tickets, three forms. I'm like, okay, whatever. But it was three forms back and front. And to me, this just seemed a little bit excessive. It was like, well, why are we, first of all, I only have two tickets to pay. Uh, and the only single thing that's really changed, I've filled out my name, my address, and every single thing on this form, for all of them, uh, I was driving my wife's car at the time, so I had to fill out the back, which was her agent in the car. And it had, the only difference was essentially the parking number on it. I was like, oh, this makes no sense whatsoever. So, Based on the fact that I had an hour to spend doing nothing at the uh, Toronto place, I decided to make a better version. So I call it Parking Form 2.0. Okay. And the point that I'm making here is that what I said is like, well, what if we made this a little better? So if you look at this form, and basically it has the exact same information at the top. Um, the difference is, is that it just has more options for numbers, right? So I was all proud of myself. I was really proud of this. I really was. I was actually like, you know what? I solved the problem. You can check off over here the grounds for, you know, like what, why you're fighting your parking tickets or whatever it is. It just makes perfect sense. And then I went home to my wife and I said to the sweetheart, like, this is what I did. And she was like, and I, you know, made a more efficient version of it. And, and her response was, well, why didn't you get so many parking tickets in the first place? I'm like, well, this is. Well, you know, it doesn't matter, but the point is that we designed the form, you know, thank you, government. Anyway, I'm sort of exaggerating a point here, and you kind of see where I'm going with this. But, so I decided, this is, again, the fact that I had an hour to spend wasting there just waiting for the uh, government to, or the ticket person to call my number. And so I decided to figure out how much does it actually cost in the government to have those three uh, parking, I'm sorry. To have those um, uh, the forms being printed, let me just put this on mute. And so I figured, quick calculation without going into too much details, at nine dollars and ninety nine cents per uh, you know five hundred ream of paper, essentially, um, if there's about fifty people going through that office per hour, um, like you're looking at about seven hundred and eighty dollars per month. Yeah, calculations are the average time for work on whatever that deal. And if there's about 10 departments, which is more introductory in this or in that building itself, given an average three paper per person, you're looking at $96,000 per year, just in paper. That's crazy when you really think about it, right? Like it's like, it's such a simple thing, but it's costing them an enormous amount of money to, pay, like to print all this paper. And it's like, why? Why are you printing all this paper? So that was my first inclination. So I figured, and simple math here, but if they just dropped down to one, which is 33% of the entire three months of thing, right, that could save them roughly $62,000 per year, just by doing that one change on that one form, okay? So I started off with this story because I want you to understand that I am obsessed with this problem. The problem is I'm trying to help and figure out how can we help business owners see this kind of problem throughout their business. Not necessarily in paper format, but just all throughout their entire business altogether. So um, as a company, we're a software company, Snap Suite, you see in the front of you. Um, we're essentially in the software company. We're, we've always been a software company, but we're re what we really are is we're just in the business of solving problems, right? How can we look at your business, figure out what is it that you're doing, and help you solve your problem? And that's basically what we try to do across the board. So more specifically, what we focus on with software is the skill trade sector. And we focus primarily on the construction, the skilled trades, the uh, HVAC repair plumbers, com general contractors, etc., etc. So that's sort of like our focus. So we want to solve the problem for that industry. And personally, I've actually spent over 15 years just focusing on this problem. How can I help? skill trades and contractors and 
uh, business owners like, be more efficient with their business up together, okay? So that's gonna be the premise of the talk today, right? And what I'm gonna do is just kind of break this talk into a few parts for you, and the goal is so that we, like, it's not gonna be sort of me just preaching, like I definitely want some interaction from you guys, so uh, feel free to jump up and ask questions if you have any. Uh, the second thing is if, um, I will try to break this up, so I'm gonna give you sort of the big picture, the problem that we're seeing it from our perspective, and what I'm gonna do is talk about some solutions that we're essentially, um, potential solutions that people are actually working to solve. And then the other thing is we're gonna talk about um, uh, your problem, so try to get some insight from you and see if this is something that you guys are resonating with so I could understand like, what's happening from your perspective. Uh, and then we'll just kind of wrap it up with sort of how software can help you overcome some of these challenges. So that gives you sort of quickly. We're going to try to wrap it up in 40 minutes because I want you guys to go back to work. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Okay, so let's start with a big picture. So employers are actually um, having a problem across the board, right? Uh, they're essentially running out of skilled trade workers. That's the core of the problem. It's a really big problem across the board. It doesn't matter where you look. Um, so 70% of uh, construction companies are actually having uh, difficulty finding jobs. And this was actually a study put out by the Associated um, General Contractors of America. Right? And they're figuring out that by, of all the companies that are starting, 70% are having this problem across the board. It doesn't matter where they are. And What's more striking is that 68% of those job openings are in the infrastructure related space. So um, the problem is that of those 68% of companies, like there are more companies that are outside uh, in the infrastructure space with job openings than actual training. In other words, we just can't find people to train them fast enough to fill these job openings that exist. Right? Huge problem. Huge uh, in, uh, thing all together. This is another study again by the Association of America. So you're saying, you know what? This problem is far, but this problem is actually right in our backyard as well too. So I was having a conversation uh, earlier up in this year with the Toronto Board of Trade, and I was talking to the director, and they actually put out a recent study. This is a study that was done this year, and they figured that in Toronto they're going to need an extra hundred and fifty thousand workers just to keep up with existing demands of Toronto. How big is Barry? You guys are like, what, 150,000 or so, right? So essentially all of Barry, you're gonna need just to keep up with Toronto's demand. So the biggest question that I have for you, and you know, think about it is, like, how are you gonna compete with Toronto? That's the real question, right? Like, because they're sucking the workers, like they, and they're, they're paying the dollars and whatever it is. But the real question is, how can you compete with so this is sort of a breakdown of where the problem is happening all together. Um, and this is part of that Toronto trade study, by the way. And what they're saying is that over the next course of the next 10 years, um, you're going to need that 150,000 workers. But this red, this orange bar that you're seeing here, is essentially retired people, people that are coming out of the industry. Okay? So what's happening is uh, they're predicting that they're going to need an extra 30,000 people just to replace the retired people that are coming out of retirement, like going into retirement altogether. Huge problem. Huge fundamental problem altogether. So this slide actually kind of sums it up. And I'm preaching to the choir here, but I'm trying to make you understand sort of the, 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 the breadth of the problem. So you have essentially this perfect storm. You have the uh, skilled trade workers shortage, and you have a construction industry that since 2008 has just been an increase with an annual growth rate of roughly 4% annually. 68% um, of those jobs are going to new constructions and then there's sort of 30% for maintenance. Okay? So you see where the problem is. Right? It's a massive shortage of workers altogether and this is where uh, we're trying to figure out how can we be, like, help you with this. Any questions on this? Oh, okay. So people are essentially trying to obviously they recognize that there's a problem. Governments are recognizing that this is an issue. Um, institutions are recognizing that this is a problem. And so they're trying to figure out what can we do to solve it all together, right? And so 
uh, one thing is people are essentially trying to figure out how bad is the problem? Like, is it you know a fact that we don't have workers? Uh, can we just you know try to patch this up? Can we ignore it? Right? Some people are trying to push it under the rug. What can we do to solve this problem altogether? Um, so we're essentially leaning on the on the side that this is actually a really really bad problem, and if we don't try to figure out what to do with it, it's going to get even worse. Right? So it has to be some sort of approach to talk together. So I want to talk about some of the solutions that people are trying to do, um, which is actually some really good uh, solutions altogether. The first one is the obvious one: get more workers. Right? If you have a shortage of workers, then what are you going to do? Find more workers altogether. Um, you know, so there's you know trade association schools and the government is, is putting a lot of um, emphasis on those associations to try and get them get the uh, incentives for this, the kids to come out of high school to go into these sort of trades altogether. And this has been a, a really good initiative by the government because at least they're trying to have a dialogue and try to fix the problem altogether. Um, and we think this is good in theory. Uh, the problem is is that. You can't solve this overnight, that's number one. The second thing is, um, you know, going to this sort of notion about trees, if you don't have trees in a forest, then the obvious thing is to plant more trees. Well, the problem with that is that your trees have to start somewhere, right? So in other words, your trade association, um, institutions that are trading these people, they're starting at this level. So they're essentially saplings, like they're young. And the problem is, is that you need workers now. Like you don't need workers tomorrow, <coughs> or next year, or next 10 years from now. You need them now. So how can we essentially solve that problem? So instead of looking at this, which is essentially a tree, and you know it's gonna grow, you know it's gonna get to that point, what you really need is this. Right? You need full grown trees, people that actually already know the trades that you need, uh, people that understand what the, the requirements of the job and they can actually get that job done right away and that's essentially what you're looking for, right? So, um, people are trying all sorts of things. So, we understand that even though the, the trades are coming up and they're helping to solve the problem, it's not a solution for them. The other problem or solution that we see people are trying to do is this, steel workers. So, um, true story, we actually had, I was talking to a, a, a client of ours, and, and, and this was a complaint, a real complaint. And he said that they went to, um, his workers would go to a, to a gas station in the society. And consistently, uh, his competitor would come to them and try to poach them to get to the other company. Consistently. So uh, my next question was, well, did they hire this guy to go and just hang out by the gas station? Like, how did they know when this guy's gonna come along? It sounds like they just literally just stay there and just try to figure out when they can actually poach these workers, which is crazy when you think about it, right? Um, so this is not a solution. Whatever you do, do not do this. Don't steal workers, okay? Um, and the problem is, is that, you know, you try to steal workers only makes it bad for the industry altogether. It just it creates tension around them, and you don't want to do that. You have to get it, you want to help the entire industry. Okay. Um, the next obvious is zip recruiter or um, posted jobs and job forums. Anybody ever heard of that zip recruiter? Okay. No? So zip recruiter, um, highly recommended. If you're looking for workers, this is probably one of the best places you can go to at least thing. So the way how it works is you post one job posting on zip recruiter and it will automatically post it out to every single possible place you can think about that there's a job posted on. Uh, for, you know, whether it's Craigslist, Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, Indeed.com. The goal is to kind of streamline that process, right? So it's very, very efficient when it comes to doing that. And then the good thing is that if the job is filled, then you can essentially just manage it from that one position. So uh, if there's any single thing that you got from this talk and you're looking for workers, this is probably like the number one tool that I would recommend for, for that particular purpose. Okay, so I think we could all agree that the lack of workers is a problem. I think based on those slides, it's very clear that it is sort of a, a fundamental problem in terms of how we actually um, deal with this and what are we going to do. So, 
The first thing that I'd like you to think about is the fact that um, people are really concerned about the fact that there's shortage of skilled trade workers, but from our perspective, um, we actually think that there's huge operational efficiency that can be gained from what you already have. In other words, you already have an operation, you already have a functioning team. Why not try to optimize that? Right? Why not try to get those three papers that I talked about earlier done to one? Right? Make it more efficient so you can save that money. Ask yourself, what can I do if I were able to save my company, say, $100,000 in a year? Right? What, what would I be able to do with that? Um, so from our perspective as software developers, we actually feel that people are overlooking this problem or overlooking this solution altogether. It's sort of like going under the radar. Um, people are not focused on uh, improving their personal efficiency in their, in their current environment. Uh, they're not focused on scheduling efficiencies, like trying to figure out how we can make scheduling a lot more efficient. And those are real time savers that you could save to actually shave off, not just time in the day, but actually costs, all right, by being more efficient up to them. Um, the problem, and this is one of the reasons why this is not necessarily such a uh, forthcoming thing, is the fact that the skill trade industry just don't like change, they don't like technology, they don't embrace technology on sort of a consistent basis. I mean, this is a problem, right? So how can you add software to improve efficiency if you have the skill trades industry that don't necessarily like change, right? They don't necessarily like embracing the technology altogether. So, the thing is, you're not alone in this particular thing because 80% of the skill trades industry altogether, it doesn't matter whether it's the fabricator, plumbers, contractors, or whatever, um, manually operate your business. Does anybody know what I mean by manually? Remember, dinner paper, there we go. Um, huge problem. So this is basically what a typical service company looks like or, or contracted company, a general contractor trades company out together, okay? Um, you have sort of a business owner, you call him Mark in this particular case, right? And uh, he has the demand, because we've already proven that there is a demand for work. The problem is, is that it's really just struggling to keep up with the existing demand like that. It's just so much work that's coming in, it's just too much paper. Uh, another common issue is that, and this is, you know, it depends on the industry, it depends on the person, it, it varies tremendously, but is that Generally speaking, like contractors are not very tech savvy, generally speaking. So um, they're also using multiple disconnected tools. So a whiteboard in one of these guys, which means there's nothing wrong. I'm a big whiteboard lover, by the way. I'm, I'm a huge fan of whiteboards. So um, there's nothing wrong with a whiteboard. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using Excel. And this is sort of a legacy system. Um, anybody familiar with legacy systems? Do you understand? So legacy, in other words, just replace legacy with old and old software, think DOS or things like the command line wrong types of stuff, right? You're smiling. <laughs> you know what that is. You remember, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, they're still around, and actually, you know what? Some of those legacy systems are actually a lot more efficient than the newer stuff, because you, uh, back then, you could do a lot of these stuff with, with keyboard, um, and you know, today, you have to use a mouse and stuff, it's very, very different, but they are very efficient. The problem is, is that they weren't necessarily, these solutions weren't designed for today's modern way of doing our business and operating it. And that's where the real, real challenge comes in. So um, this is what we want to address. Because from our perspective, um, and hopefully I'm passing that message on to you, is that as you start to think about efficiency and you start thinking about sort of the problems that are going on within your own organization is, you want to try and see if you can kind of solve this problem all together. Does this resonate with anybody? Yeah? Okay. So I, I got a couple questions that I want to ask all together. I'll start with you, uh, Scott. Um, so when you're doing sort of like your your operations or whatever, like are you using a software right now? Well, <clears throat> a loaded question because I retired a month ago. Okay. Well, so <laughs> tell me the history. <laughs> right now my, my system is uh, right here. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and, you. and it's just primary email and stuff, or you actually yeah. have like a software? No, no, just okay. I, I'm, I'm not using anything. Okay, okay, fair enough, cool. So when you say retired, right now you're just sort of like 
you're done done or you're like trying to get back in done trying to well, I start my MBA on Monday, as a matter of fact. Oh, interesting. So Congratulations. Back to school. That is awesome. Yeah. Good for you. So that, that's actually really interesting. Because um, uh, when, you, when you go through that, um, you definitely will see some of this common trend because they're going to try to push you in sort of this uh, modern way, if you will, if you're in uh, business altogether. Um, and, and is your goal after your MBA to do another business or sure. join another company kind of thing. Yeah, no, I have uh, an idea of something that I'm going to pursue. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Okay, so the only thing I have to ask for you is just don't don't stay on this platform. Okay. Uh, whatever you do, whatever you do the next time. I'm gonna follow up with you on this one. Okay. So let me ask you, um, uh, uh, Joey, your operations, like what are you guys using software wise? What are you using internally? All of the above. Okay, fair enough. Um, do software. You, do you know the software that you're using? I'm just curious. D depends on what you're talking about. Software okay. for what? I mean, we use different things for so different. So tell me about your role. Tell me what you do. Like, just so I understand. Like, your well, we use a software for time tracking. Right. We use a software for accounting system. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, we use a lot of paper. Got to. Okay. Too much paper. So time tracking. Um, this is punch in, punch out kind of deal? Electronics and okay. phone. Okay, got you, okay, fair enough. And then um, for accounting system, what kind of system do you use? We use Sage. Sage accounting, okay. Is this, do you have the cloud version? Is it the desktop version? We use the desktop version. Okay, so the old version out together. Okay, and why paper? What are you using with paper, work orders? No, just okay. our suppliers send. Purchase us. orders. Well, they yeah. send. The invoices come in, a lot of them come in electronically through okay, email, sure. yeah. so that's good, mm -hmm. um, but then it gets printed so that someone yeah. else can enter it right. into the system. Okay, so it's that's interesting. Yeah. Email, digital, then back to analog, then back to digital again, so why do we type it in another system? Yeah, and I really want to get rid of the paper side of it, that okay. would be awesome to yeah. get rid of yeah. that, okay. Very especially good. because our our staff is now starting to be in different locations. I see. So it needs to become even more digital. Right. Um, so that. Yeah, well, you can spread the paperwork around and people actually access the information that they need. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so the challenge is that everything's in one location. Mm -hmm. So how do you get other people that information mm -hmm. when it comes in? Say in the mail and paper form. Right. Okay. Because the industry is like very tight. Yes. Yeah. And so it's not just your business; it's other people's business. They're pushing the paper on you. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you're trying to digitalize it. So yeah. You can yeah. So is there like a data entry person that's like just that's all they're doing is just sitting there and just re-entering this stuff into? Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's, a, that's a lot of paper. Um, I met one company recently, and they had uh, they've uh, moved from not just one, not just two, not just three, but four data entry people. That's all they do all day long. Entering paperwork, and it's like, but it, what what's interesting about it is that they enter that paperwork into the system, and when they want to find something, they still go back to the manual version of it because the system they can't search it properly, which is trying to figure out why are you doing all this work for different systems that you can. Well, and the problem with the software, even the accounting systems, it doesn't necessarily upload digital invoices. Okay, okay, fair enough. Right, so you get an invoice from a supplier, how do you get it into your accounting system without manually entering it? Right, yeah, you definitely a good point for sure. I don't think that enough of that because it'll answer that. Um, okay, I got a good sense of uh, your take. So Brian, tell me your such. Uh, we are paper heavy. Mm -hmm. um, all our work order or our service call work orders are all on paper. Okay. So we have digitalizing that. And okay. Do you need a content system? What are you using for that? QuickBooks uh, or Sage? Sage or Sage or Sage or Sage or Sage Time. You guys work together? Yes. Oh, you do? Oh, yes. okay. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Gonna tell me that at the start. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, fair enough. Cool. So you're on the you're on the managing side, and you're on the which side? Estimating. Estimating. Okay. So um, are you doing purchase orders as well too? 
Yeah, yes. Okay, fair enough, cool. And uh, so when you do purchase orders, you use in Sage for this or you're? No, it's on an Excel. Excel, okay, fair enough, got you. So Excel, <laughs> and then you're emailing it the Excel out to the That's supplier. They send it back by email, and then you go to Brian? It goes into their account. So you count it, okay. So then? And then she creates a work order on the account. Got to, and then you pick it up from there, or? Uh, not really, it just, okay. it's, it's just leave it. It's there, <laughs> and then got the purchase order, now we can talk about it. Got it, okay, okay, fair enough, yeah, yeah. Um, the reason why I ask that is because um, in some cases, like one of the challenges that we know is that um, like people go to order a bunch of parts and stuff, whatever it is for the, for the job site, and those stuff will actually come in and be in the warehouse, and nobody knows that they need to like get the other part of the job going, right? So it's just kind of sitting there, so this big sort of gap between what was purchased and what was actually shipped, right? Um, huge problem altogether. So okay, then give me a sense of what's going on. Now. Okay. So so you're identifying with this, which is good. So I'm not talking to people that don't know. Um, so this is our view on this particular case. Now we're not telling you that we're gonna, you know, wake up tomorrow and solve this skill trade worker shortage problem. No one can do that. The apprenticeship will slowly get there, and those saplings will grow up to be, you know, old trees. Um, but what we're saying is that we can at least partially mitigate the problem, right? We can kind of, if we could find the inefficiencies altogether, we could sort of like make them a little bit, a lot more efficient with the process and what we're doing today. So I've been talking sort of very high level so far right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of examples so you kind of um, just get a little more concrete example of like what I'm talking about. So um, just so I understand, what type of company is it? Is it contract, electrical, contract. electrical contractor of yours? Uh, general contractor. General contractor. Okay. And then what were you doing before? Uh, I was an engineer. Engineer. Okay. So more in the design and kind of thing. Okay. Fair enough. Cool. Okay. Fair good mix for me. Um, so I'll start with sort of like a case study, sort of like in the service kind of field, the trade side. So general electrical kind of field. So just walk me through, or just follow me for a second. Um, call comes in. Hey, we got an electrical problem, okay, uh, and we need to fix ASAP. Okay. So that person takes the call as normal, enters it into a system, a system, um, and then what happens is through the use of from that system, they send a text message to the person's phone. So they enter the you know the information, all the details related to the work order, including the details. This technician is already out in the room, so he's somewhere out in the field or whatever. So he gets a text message, says, you need to go to Hilly Corporation, phone number is this, you need to talk to John Smith. Right? And this is the location, and here's the problem with that uh, electrical company, in this case, the door company. The technician responds with, okay. When that happens, and multiple things happen, first of all, I want to point out the obvious. This is text message. It's not a software, it's not a you know some complicated solution. It's just text message. That's all it is. It's a system communicating with a tech with a technician via text. Okay? Um, so he responds with okay. Now when this when the system responds gets this confirmation, the system sends back call this guy John, sends John a message and says, thank you for your confirmation. So John knows that the system acknowledged his text message. He got it. This OK could do five or six things in the background. Number one, it could send you a message as sort of like the manager to say, um, yeah, John is actually on his way to that job site. So now you could communicate with your you know, higher bees, if you will, and you know, let them know what's going on with the status of the job. The second thing that this text message could trigger is um, a notification to the customer. So the customer actually knows that um, John is on his way to the job site. Right? And so the customer just has a little bit more peace of mind that somebody's actually coming to fix their really bad electrical problem. Right? Um, the third thing is that the system could also send you um, sort of a, an email and put this on a dashboard so you're seeing a count of all the jobs that are open versus the jobs that are sort of currently being worked on in real time. And that's the key here. Those five, six, seven things that I just, whatever number I just mentioned, is happening within the space of seconds. 
as opposed to minutes, right? Um, so contra that example that I just gave with sort of like the current existing approach, which was sort of like the traditional way, the call would come in, yeah, they might enter it in the system or they enter it in a, you know, in a book or whatever it is that they're entering it. Um, they might have to call the service manager and say, hey, um, who do I dispatch this job to or who do I send the details to? Then they call the technician, they have another conversation with the technician, right? So you can see how that alone, you know, 10, 15 minutes just to kind of do that one thing. And this, from this particular scenario, you're looking at, you know, a couple of minutes at most, right? Just to get the fastest text message you go to, because this is essentially real time communication, right? Um, the good thing about this is that the system is also running numbers on things that you're not necessarily thinking about. So take, for example, performance. So how fast is Scott answering his sort of uh, job versus Brian, right? You might be on top of it, but the minute the call comes in, you say, yeah, I got it, I'm on it, right? And Brian, whoever knows what's happening, you know, probably hanging out by Tim Hortons, right? Um, just, you know what, I'm, I just feel like doing two jobs with me, so I'm just gonna sit on this one for a while, right? But we can pick up that trend over time because we're seeing the data coming, right? How fast you respond and whatever, right? So when you have a problem with skilled trade workers, right? Efficiency has to be your next thing. How can we get more with less? And this is sort of that sort of scenario. Any questions around this? So when we get a call for yeah. a service call, mm -hmm. it's never okay. put that and go. Yeah. So we book two weeks or three weeks or whatever in advance. Right. So we get a phone call, they say they have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's we booking on uh, August 10th. Yeah. It's our next available date. Right. We book it in the schedule and then in their workers' schedule they have it and they have their list for August 10th that day and we right. run that all the way through. Mm -hmm. How does this program or what you just explained? Yeah. Translate into translate into that kind of process because we're not uh, yes in, just in time. Yeah, we're not just in time. Yeah, so so that's a very specific question to a specific software question, uh, which I will answer. Um, that's not this scenario. Okay. Um, you can when a call comes in in the system, uh, sort of like do schedule it. So you say this will happen in two weeks. The system will essentially just kind of push that down the pipeline. It will yeah. sort of prioritize the more urgent ones. And when two weeks come, that becomes a priority. Yeah. And then you can send that out to the, to the technician, right? Um, so it will handle those cases, absolutely. You can schedule and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, the goal is, uh, just to add one more point to that, is you know preventative maintenance or typical case like this where they don't do you know, Sometimes they happen on a Monday, sometimes they happen on a Tuesday. It depends on the schedule when things are happening. Um, so you could say, you know what, this job needs to happen every four months or every week or whatever it is, and you schedule it out, and that job just kind of disappears until that day that's needed, and then it just disappears on the dashboard, and then you could essentially send out the technician to that job as time the right technician to it, right? Um, so yeah, scheduling would be something that's inside of there. Um, and, and there's multiple systems that handle that. And I'm not just talking about just our system. There's, there's multiple systems that do handle those kind of cases. Um, for us, though, the conversation is scheduling. Truly, it's a great conversation to have, and, and it makes sense. There's lots of systems that are doing anything. The problem is, is how can we like squeeze more efficiency out of the workers that yeah. we all, we just have, like have right now, and that's a critical sort of like component that a lot of our competitors, for sure, they're just missing, right? Because their 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 eyes are on a different sort of way of um, approaching this uh, solution. So. Um, the next thing, so uh, purchase orders. So I want to touch on, on sort of your point and your point of thing. So um, you're more in the architecture kind of deal, but any quotations? No, I just bought Okay, fair enough, yeah. So in this particular case, um, quotations are one of those things where um, nobody has the right solution. So on one hand, um, you know, you could go into, okay, let's use QuickBooks as an example. You could go into QuickBooks, you can do a quick quote, and you can set it up. The problem with that for somebody like you is that it's just not detailed enough. You need the details, right? Am I making an assumption correct? Um, and so then, you know, there's more complex uh, sort of quotation tools on the market, but then they're missing that one feature altogether. And so that becomes a big challenge in the industry. Um, the way how we kind of approach this 
with, with our solution altogether is the, the simple thing. So the name, the address, the phone number, all the details um, uh, could be automatically generated uh, in a Microsoft Word document. But the things that are very consistent, so okay, let's just make it a little more concrete. Give me an example of a job that you would like architect put together so I understand. Well, this building, for example, okay, fair enough. Yeah. we would be like we would work for an architect, yeah, and uh, we would be the structural consultant, right? So we would quote only the the structural portion of the work, and okay. we would obviously send that to the architect, and we would be probably one of three or four or five. Have a bidding for it, yeah, yeah. And um, are you and you're primarily using the Microsoft Word, or are you yep. using a bid program or anything like Just that? Word. Just Word. Okay, fair enough. Cool. Yeah. So. There's lots of parts of that document that are kind of boilerplate, is that a fair assessment? Yes. Uh, and then there's parts that you have to just go into detail, work through those details. So but they, it's only like two paragraphs out of, say, two pages. Fair enough, yeah. Um, so those boilerplate type of stuff, like they're just mundane, you don't care about them, you just want to get them inside the document kind of deal. So, you know, obviously you would choose a customer um, name and address and location and job site and all that sort of stuff. And then those boilerplate stuff, you would just choose them from sort of a drop down. It would be templated kind of deal. Um, and what this would do from a quotation standpoint, it would at least generate you the initial document, Microsoft Word, right? That then you could go in and then make the detailed change, like the real details that you're putting in. Uh, but the important thing is that um, what we add, just to add some efficiencies, we actually add a tab in Microsoft Word. So there's literally a tab that says, well, it's a company in this particular case that says um, save and generate. And what that does is automatically converts that file once you're finished with it back to a PDF and then re upload it back into the system. So your, your next button click is an email that says send it out to the client. Now, when that happens, um, we send it out to the client. We're tracking whether the client got it, right? So if they received it, um, they could potentially sign it if they, if they uh, approve the quotation. But then we're also updating sort of a dashboard that you could see that, yeah, these ones were sent out. Uh, this one I still got to do some work on. Um, but the other thing is, you might be sending some sort of brochures. I'm not making this up now, but you know, brochures are, are, are related documents related to that uh, quotation they're trying to, so they can kind of supplement like what is it you're actually trying to uh, build. And those, those are template things that just could be automatically attached. You don't have to go into the file share and find that you know stuff and then kind of get it done. And the cool is, is that even if I could shave shave off for you, say it takes you two hours. I'm just making this up. And it takes a lot more details than that. Um, and we can shave off 20 or 30 minutes off of that creation process. Like over time, you're talking a lot of savings, right? So you can move on to the next thing, right? Um, and again, going back to the efficiency, that's the core, right? Like. Um, it doesn't matter which software you use, or like I'm not even preaching our software right now. What I'm what I'm trying to uh, drive home here is that you have to think about how can I shave off just time throughout the day so I can build back, you know, and get back on time and maybe go on a vacation or do something else with it, right? Like whatever you want to do. But the point is that you can kind of reduce that um, uh, time spent on it. Any questions on this? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so. To kind of wrap things up here, um, to make sure I have this, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, we're almost done. So, with our system and what we focus on is really, like, we focus on essentially trying to help you to improve the existing process. That's our goal, right? Our goal is to try and see how can we take whatever you're doing right now and not change the last 20 years of paperwork process that you've already put in place that is working for you and not functioning in business. How can we just make that a little more efficient? How can we take that and just take it to the next level and then improve those existing workflows that you already have, right? With software in a way that's not necessarily intrusive, right? Um, does it require retraining your entire staff and sending them to sort of like a seminar like this where they have to like spend the entire day um, learning new software, right? Which half of them don't use any which way because um, we had a customer the other day um, to reach out to us uh, they said that last year they spent twenty thousand dollars on implementing the software, and they didn't use it. And she said the reason why they didn't use it was because the main person, like the main uh, sort of uh, guy that knows the entire business inside out, refused to use it. Couldn't get him to use it, no matter what. 
So we asked her, we said, well, you know, does he care about the business? She's like, yes, he cares a lot. He's working hard every single day. We just don't want to use the software. So how can you change that, right? Um, does anybody have SharePoint? <laughs> oh, oh, still SharePoint. Don't even get me started. That's a whole lot of talk by itself. <laughs> but you understand that pain. You understand it. Yeah. And about 100 grand. Yes, yes, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, no, this is your absolutely true. It's, it is a nightmare. And, um, yeah, I can say that. But uh, in full disclosure, we are a Microsoft backed company, by the way. Uh, Microsoft has invested uh, 360K in our company. So, um, yeah, but uh, but I, I do have to write to see the sheer point is. Uh, is a load of crap, I'll tell you that. Um, so that point here is just, you know what, like, um, and it, with our software, like, basically, and again, I'm not preaching our software here, but whatever software you use, you want to ensure that it integrates with whatever existing system you're already using. So you guys mentioned Shapes, uh, Sage, somewhere up this there. Yeah, right? Um, so you need to pull and push information. So going back to that legacy software, right? We're not telling you you have to replace that system. What we're telling you is that um, you can take a modern system, put it in place, and just kind of bring all that information together, right? And that's basically what we focus on, and that's where we kind of like help to kind of get you more efficient. Because if it's working for you, why are you going to change it, right? Um, and so, essentially, in a nutshell, this is what we do, right? We take all those disconnected pieces uh, and try to bring them all together in one centralized solution, so you don't have to jump from email program over to Microsoft Word back into you know, your accounting program, right? you do billing. Um, so we focus on billing, we don't do accounting. Just uh, people always ask that question. Um, and it's a big distinction. The distinction is, is that all the details from the work order and all the details from the purchase order and every single thing that's required for billing is very critical. Um, so what you want to do is you want to get that information out to the invoice as fast as possible so you can send out the invoice. And then what we do is we take the invoice all together, we push it into Sage or, or QuickBooks or one of, one of those programs automatically. This is done in the background, so that, that entry job, you probably have to fire her. I'm just kidding. Um, but we you know, give her something else to do, right? Don't have to spend the time doing that data entry because it's duplication. So our entire goal, and this is the last slide that I have, is um, we've recognized that the larger companies in the industry, the really big companies, they get this problem. They understand it. They're obviously scooping up a lot of the workers, um, but they're also trying to be more efficient. And so what we're trying to do is empower people like yourself in smaller companies to figure out how you can compete with the larger companies. And the only way you're going to be able to compete is by being more efficient. And that's my last message to you. So I hope this has been a little bit of uh, somewhat informative to you guys. And uh, Any questions on this? So you come to companies and you evaluate different ways to improve efficiency through documents, through uh, information processing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, this talk is really about this white paper. Um, but uh, but yes, to answer your question, um, what we do is we're, we're software, but we're solving problems. So we literally come and we sit with you and you say, you know what, just show me what you do. Just show me how you run your business. What is it that you actually do? And once we kind of figure that out, we can say, okay, well, I tell you what, if you do this, this, and this, you'll be able to save X amount of hours or X amount of cost or whatever it is. And we just kind of give you that. And then from there, you choose to use our software or use another software, like we kind of guide you along the way. Um, we, our software is a, is a solution that handles some of those gate dispatching and scheduling and uh, billing and all that kind of stuff. And it, it's the goal is to kind of wrap it up in a very efficient, uh, package that just makes it a lot more streamlined than our competitors. That's our goal and that's our, our selling point. But yeah, like if if, uh, if you're interested in just having a conversation so we can understand like where you're having these inefficiencies, yeah, we can definitely sit down and have that conversation. That's, that's what we do. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to formulate my mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, with a lot of our businesses, um, there's a lot of variables and while well, it's always important to I mean we're looking for efficiencies and we know that there's a lot of efficiencies. Right. Right. Part of the challenge is with the nature of the business mm -hmm. um, it's hard to envision 
you've, there would be a lot of other things you'd have to change outside of your influence right. to be able to have a positive impact. And gotcha. that's where I'm having my I see. hard yeah. time wrapping my head around that. That's a very, very valid point. Um, actually, it's, it's, it's probably the biggest um, sort of deterrent from companies making changes is because when you think of the problem, especially if you're doing a manager role, you're kind of seeing that big picture, then you're always seeing that holistic view of the company in itself, and that becomes a problem because, you know what, you might be seeing the big picture, but you, if you actually just solve just this one billion duplication issue, this might actually save you the company some money and be more efficient to free up someone else, thing, right? So the real challenge is, where can we find those small wins? The small wins. So, um, you know, getting dispatching a lot more efficient, or preventing the duplication of just data entry, or right, like just very, very small wins, and 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 then over time, figure out how we can tackle sort of the bigger ones, right? Um, and it's it's really hard if you're in the operation to to address that problem. It really, really is, right? And that's what like where our strengths are is because we're seeing multiple different companies constantly. Um, we're able to kind of like, okay, well this worked for these guys, this worked for these guys, how about this? And sort of like give you sort of like an approach that might make sense to uh, solve that problem. Right? But it definitely is, a, is, a, is a probably one of the number one like blockage for companies trying to like make that jump. Because business owners, it's, they don't wake up every day and say, I want to run most inefficient company. <laughs> they, that's not what their, their goal is, right? Their goal is to try and figure out how can we streamline this operation, move things faster, get paid? Like that's what they care about. But then there's all of these things like obstacles along the way, right? Um, so yeah, definitely taking a step back, having an outside person looking into the company to kind of help you uh, find those smaller things.